at the World Championships three years in a row. So top 32, top 16, and top eight. That's that is incredibly impressive. And then we see, of course, his deck Buzzwell like in Rock Nine Tails uh, archetype that has been doing pretty well uh, for the weekend. Nine Tails really just pushing this deck forward, being able to search for those B strings during those very crucial turns. Yeah, just uh, any kind of you know any kind of ability that lets you just search for items you need out of your deck. Items are usually the, the sorts of things that you kind of have to land drawing into with draw cards. Usually there aren't many things that actually search them out. So when you do have something that enables you to just get them the exact item you need at the right time, it makes, makes Alone of Nine Tails one of the most impressive GXs from Lost Thunder. Meanwhile, for Daniel, his accomplishments, of course, like you said, the 2017 Europe International Champion, top eight at the Oceania Internationals as well, top eight at last seasons in Latin America internationals and then top eight at North American internationals. Uh, definitely no stranger here and he's really hoping for another win. So that means that he's top eighted at least top eighted rather the last four internationals in a row. Wow. Uh, and that, that's five now because he's obviously in the final here. Uh, this is the definition of consistency here for Daniel and he is really looking to cement his resume here. Yeah, he absolutely is. Now, just going into the list quickly, obviously we can talk about the list now that the players have the headsets on. Something interesting I noticed about Daniel's list is that unlike uh, Zach's list that we saw on the top eight yesterday, Daniel is playing two energy switch. Yeah, uh, definitely could be a reason why he was able to take down that Zora control in top eight and really can just surprise a Blacephalon attack out of nowhere when you don't have access to B-strings. Yeah, because obviously if you don't have access to B-strings, then there's a real possibility of attaching more than one energy to in one turn to a Blacephalon. So looking at the prizes for Christian there, he actually had two Choice Band and a Kakui in his prizes. Those are a lot of his damage modifiers, and he really kind of needs that to take these one-hit knockouts on these Blacephalon GXs. Yeah, he does. It's not really ideal. We know from Daniel's side, I don't think his prizes were anywhere near as bad by comparison. I mean, yeah, a 1-1 like, one, one and and one thing to point out, he only does play the three, where some opt to play the four. So it could come up, especially if he has to discard it with maybe a burst GX. Yeah, absolutely. But in any case, we are off, ladies and gentlemen. The senior finals for the Latin American International Championships with Christian Moreno going first. Yeah, Ultra Ball discarding another Ultra Ball and then Alolan Ninetales. Really just trying to figure out what is prized and try to make a game plan from there. He, as... As soon as you see your opponent flip over that Blacephalon GX, you know exactly what you're playing against. Yeah, and uh, just going straight for the Buzzball there, of course. It's one of the one of the most impactful non-GX attackers we've seen in a long time, especially towards the early stages of the Sun and Moon on standard format. We've seen playing so many different things. Just even you know, the first attack, if of course, it does 30 damage regularly, but if your opponent has four prize cards remaining, it does 120 it's kind of proven that even at when you don't have that sledgehammer turn where you get the extra damage with it, it's just still so efficient because it does a lot of damage on a non-GX. Yeah, and it's really thanks to all those damage modifiers. Having the other choice band in his deck, the last one with the two prize, pretty good here, along with that Diancy Prism Star and then a Lily for seven cards turn one. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic stuff from Christian here. And to get the unit energy as well, just attach that to the active and then passes over to Daniel. How is he going to respond to this? Yeah, uh, getting that unit energy on the Vulpix is super threatening for Daniel right now because that could mean a Sublimation GX as soon as turn two. Yeah, that would really be not ideal for Daniel. Although, if that's the case, Daniel could then respond with a Beast Ring immediately. Yeah, and that's really going to be the key to this matchup is how each player utilizes their Beast Ring turns and if they're going to be able to capitalize on taking all these knockouts. Yeah, it's important to note as well, Daniel's hand is super strong. He's got a Mysterious Treasure, Ultra Ball, and about three Fire Energy. So not only can he discard a bunch of energy, but he can pretty much set up in exactly the way he needs to. Yeah, and another key note here is with Naganadal in your deck, it is a Psychic Attacker against these Psychic Weak Buzzwool and Buzzwool GXs. Uh, really could come into play here. Yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Is that... Does he not have access to Tapu Lele? He... he I think, oh, okay, he prized one. I thought, I didn't think that would be an issue, but he only actually plays one in his list. Oh, wow. So, depending on what his hand is... Yeah, there it is. Wow. Uh, this, this could be huge. We see a mysterious treasure, but yeah, 
No other supporter card in his hand. Marshadow might be his only out to actually draw out of this hand. Yeah, it, it will be. So, I mean, at, at the very least, he does have that, but sort of had to, to take back what I said, thinking, yeah, he can set up amazingly exactly what he wants, but no, he has to Marshadow instead of going for maybe a Tapu Lele for a Lily. And there it is. Let Loose Marshadow. Both players shuffle their hand into their deck and draw four cards. Really, the only way outside of the supporter card judge to... Uh, combat what your opponent has. Yeah, it's uh, just like, exactly like Judge. Both players shuffle their hands into their decks and draw four cards afterwards. Daniel really needs to find some good stuff off of this Let Loose. We have seen Let Loose you know, come back to really not be that effective, but sometimes it doesn't look like Daniel has drawn that well off of his. Yeah, double Guzma, double fire energy here. Yikes. Not what you're looking for. Meanwhile, Christian has a Cynthia in his hand. He and will be able to draw out of it next turn. He does, and the Burst GX there discarding a uh, Cynthia from the prizes. Of course, no fire energy in the prizes, or, or no any, any kind of energy at all, means that Burst GX was never going to get full value. But now Christian can just kind of run away with this game if he, if he can. Yeah, uh, thinking about committing that Buzzwool GX to the field, uh, it's definitely kind of a liability just because it's so easily one hit by Mind Blown from Blacephalon GX. Uh, just an insanely powerful attack. Yeah, just can... Oh yeah, Christian really needs to just capitalize on this poor start that Daniel has had. It might even be a consideration to not use Sublimation GX if he's able to access it because well, he doesn't necessarily know that Daniel's hand is as weak as it we know it is. He could just think maybe he's well, holding onto a bunch of B-strings. Yeah, well, he still didn't play a supporter, so if there's no way for him to actually get a Blacephalon next turn, then even B-Strings not really that doing that much. That is very true, of course. But it looks like a bunch of energy in hand for Christian here. Yeah, a bunch of energy. No... I mean, he did need one energy regardless, but there seems to be no way of accessing a Alola Ninetales GX, so he will just be forced to Beacon, which I will, at least will guarantee him the Alola Ninetales for next turn. Yep, and there is the Beacon getting that Tapu Lele, so he will be able to get another supporter for next turn. Yeah, Daniel probably thinking, I suppose you could give me one of those, could you? <laughs> could, could really do with one right now. You've used two, I, I, don't, I can't use any. Yeah, just doesn't seem very fair, does it? <laughs> All right, and then now it will be back on Daniel to see if he can draw something out of his deck to help him. He does have quite a few options. There is three Sightseer, three Cynthia, two Lily as his draw cards, and then not excluding the Heat Factory. Well, here's an Acrobike, and, and there's, there's a Sightseer. A sightseer. Okay. Daniel has been bailed out here. Yeah, he has to discard that Poipole. He can't not uh, you know, take that Sightseer to his hand, although he, yeah. there's a debate here as to what he actually discards. Yeah, unfortunately, if he wants to get as many cards as possible from the Sightseer, he will have to lose access to those Guzmas. So yeah. choosing just to discard the one here. Yeah. Draws three. That is a pretty good free, though. Wow. Doesn't... Yep, there is an Ultra Space, a Beast Ring, as well as... Is that another another Sightseer. Sight wow, okay, that's a pretty good free card off of that Sightseer there. That, yeah. that Ultra Beast can just get played... The Ultra Space can get played down rather straight away, find himself another Poi Pole, and really start getting himself going at the speed he needs to. Yeah, or even getting the Naganadal and charging up and taking the knockout on the Lolan Vulpix, because remember, if he doesn't knock out this Lolan Vulpix, it's still a pretty big threat from a Lolan Ninetales GX. Yeah, of course, that's absolutely true. And with, um, it, I mean, actually, it could have been a consideration there for Daniel to get a second Blacephalon, knowing that uh, Christian would be able to find a Ninetales and KO the active Blacephalon. Because, of course, Daniel has that B-string in his hand. So he might just think to himself, okay, I'm just at this point happy to let the active Blacephalon get KO'd so I can go to my B-string turn and attach a bunch of energy and overwhelm Christian that way. And here we see the charging up from Naganadal on the bench will allow the Lacephalon to mind blown and leave one fire on the active. Uh, it's really never good to have to get rid of all your energy attached to the Lacephalon. No, exactly. So you much rather get rid of, leave one there at least, so another manual attachment next turn can find him another mind blown attack and another two prizes or one prize, depending on what he KOs. Importantly, Daniel did get the Tapu Lele out of his prizes. All right, so he will have more decisions to make on his turn. Meanwhile, Christian does have that one of Beast Energy Prism Star. Oh, that is huge. Uh, one of the first Prism Star cards to actually make a difference with uh, a, a long Diancy Prism. Yeah, exactly, which is also on the bench. But importantly, that means that uh, Christian does now have the KO on the Blacephalon GX because, of course, Daniel does have exactly four prize cards left. Oh, yeah, that's right from Burst GX. 
Yes, of course, he did one burst, one KO, and that means that Sledgehammer will be doing 200 damage to this Persephalon with uh, when you com uh, combine all the damage modifiers. It's not bad. No, it's not, no not really. <laughs> not bad at all. And there's actually a Guzma opting to take the knockout on the lone Naganadal on the bench. And with no other Poi Pool, uh, Blacephalon's really going to be limited in how much it can do. This is really, really clever because now Daniel won't have access to his B-string. If the Blacephalon got KO'd, he'd be down to, Christian would be down to four prizes. And then all of a sudden, Daniel can just attach a bunch of energy and recover the way it is currently. Daniel will struggle to take another prize. And if that's the case, there'll be another turn where Sledgehammer does 120 damage. Yeah, and having access to the Rock Ruff on the bench means Lycanroc GX can come out of nowhere and Bloodthirsty Eyes anything to the active spot, really just picking and choosing what he wants to knock out. Yeah, so there's a decision here as to what the best supporter is to go for. The Tapu Lele means that he can pick and choose what he thinks is the best option for him. Just opt to go for the Ultra Space first, just to grab himself another Poi Pull. Obviously, he wants to get out as many more Naganadals as possible. He won't be able to see his way through the rest of this game without uh, at least a couple more. There's Tapu Lele as well, benching it, maybe. Yes, won the tag. What is he going to grab from this? Could be opting for Cynthia. Uh, his draw supporters are Sightseer, uh, Cynthia, and Lily. And with his hand so stock full of cards that he either doesn't want to discard. And uh, so Cynthia is really the only option here. Yeah, and that is uh, indeed what he's going to go for. Cynthia comes out of the deck from the Wonder Tag. And we're probably just going to see him play that straight away. I don't think there's any other really playable cards in Daniel's hand he wants to make use of. Maybe the fire energy, but no, he actually doesn't, just doesn't even attach that. And there we go. Cynthia, shuffle your hand in, draw six. Uh, we could probably see just Daniel burn and confuse this buzz will kind of hope that, well, maybe if he attacks, he'll flip tails on confusion, buy me another turn. Yeah, I mean, we have seen it uh, come into play many times before that. So a bursting burn attack is surprisingly effective at what it does. Ooh, there's another good pickup from Daniel, though. He does find the Heat Factory Prism Star. Could use that to discard the Fire Energy. Yeah, replacing his own Ultra Space. Draw an extra three cards. Maybe see a couple more Poi Pool, who would be ideal for him. There it is. Does he see... Oh, an Acrobike and another Blacephalon. That's pretty good as well. Yeah, he even has access to an Ultra Ball in his hand. Uh, if he chooses to, that could get another Poi Pool. That's the Acrobike. What does he see off of it? Looks like a Lily and a Rescue Stretcher. The Rescue Stretcher is very good here, actually, and... It's actually the first Blacephalon list that I've seen that plays recovery cards. Yeah, and it's not a very common feature. Most, a lot of these Blacephalon lists we see up to not really play any kind of recovery at all, but with this Rescue Stretcher, Daniel able to get back the Poi Pole from the hand, to, to the hand rather, and then just bench it straight away. Yeah, this is a little bit awkward though, because with that Naganadal in the discard and the Rescue Stretcher already being used, and with one of them in the prizes as well, he only has access to one in his deck right now. Yeah, that's uh, obviously not ideal, and uh, you will be sort of realizing that sooner rather than later, I'm sure. There's a, probably an internal debate now going on in his mind as to whether he wants to bench the second Blacephalon. Opt not to for now, just does indeed go for that Bursting Burn, confusing and burning the Buzz Wall. Now we'll just wait for the flip. And unfortunately, from that Cynthia and the Heat Factory, he did not draw into another Fire Energy. So missing the attachment there for the turn. Yeah, uh, Christian flipping heads there. About to flip his uh, puzzle <laughs> around, though. No, it doesn't, uh, it's not the flip isn't for confusion. You don't get unconfused all of a sudden, but the burn does get healed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, burn, with that new rule change that came into effect a couple seasons ago, really just changing the way uh, you actually view that status condition and... Just 20 damage for free is yeah. pretty good. Yeah, it's a guaranteed 20. Even if it, the burn doesn't, you know, necessarily stay there, quite often than not, it didn't with the, with the way it was before regardless. So the fact that you get at least 20 damage guaranteed from burn now is pretty good. But here we see another Tapu Lele, one tag for a Guzma. And with an energy, he will be able to just Guzma retreat again. And there is a Beast Ring. Remember, wow. with four prizes, Beast Ring is live. Buzzwell GX will now be charged up and be a huge threat. Yeah, Daniel cannot get himself off of this four prize card number, and Christian is making as much use of that as he can as, yeah, with the Sledgehammer turns, with the Beast Ring onto the Buzzwell GX. Everything is going Christian's way right now. Yeah, and we see the Guzma on the Tapu Lele. He actually has a few options. He has a Lycanroc EX in hand as well, so we could see the Blacephalon come right back out, and that's what he chooses. Yeah, there it is. Uh, bringing out the Tapu Lele, attaching it, discarding to a tree, and that is KO on the Blacephalon. Christian going down to three prizes, but this does mean that Daniel now has access to B-strings of his own, which is why maybe he could have considered benching the Blacephalon last turn. Well, he just drew into another one, has the other one in hand as well. 
but one thing he is missing is those important B strings. Yeah, no B string means that he can't make as much use out of this uh, free pride turn as he might be able to otherwise. Equally, I don't believe he has access to Guzma. Like the ideal turn for him would have been to, you know, use B string, maybe Guzma KO the bus wall GX, and then sort of kind of you know, take a swing from there. Given that the bus wall and the active won't be really be doing much after Daniel gets off four prizes. All right, here we see the Ultra Ball come down, discarding that second Blacephalon, looking for that Naganadal. But remember, that's the only one left in the deck as of right now. It certainly is. He's really going to have to prioritize keeping that in play. And he actually he did have a Guzma in his hand, but he ought to discard it with Ultra Ball, interestingly enough. Maybe he's thinking that he wants to go for a turning point instead. Yeah, uh, one thing often forgot about Naganadal is that it is also an Ultra Beast, so you can B string to itself. And there wow. is two B strings off of that Sightseer. A amazing pickup for Daniel as he can now not only B string onto the onto the Naganado, but can B string onto the Blasphemon as well, pretty much setting up all the attackers he needs to see him through these last four prizes. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, what a draw here from Daniel. Even has that Beast Energy Prism in his hand as well. Could make some math easier down the road. He certainly could. Now, one unfortunate thing for Daniel is that because obviously he had to do the sights here instead of the Guzma, he won't be able to take two prizes and therefore carrying this Blacephalon means, sorry, carrying this uh, Buzzwall means that uh, Christian will have another wow. turn of B-String. Another B-String off that Heat Factory draw. Three B-Strings being played this turn that from Daniel. The, it's absolutely the ideal situation for Daniel right now. Just like I said, maybe needing to worry a little bit about some retaliation B-Strings from Christian, given that he will only be taking one prize, but still a really, really fantastic turn. And really diversifying his threats here. Uh, if Christian chooses to take the knockout on the Naganadal, he will most for sure get knocked out by that Blacephalon GX on the bench with that four energy cards. But if he opts to try to target down that Blacephalon, Magnadal with that choice ban actually does take the knockout on Buzzful GX. I also think this is the first time this entire weekend that we've seen a Blacephalon player actually able to use a B-string. Yeah. <laughs> uh, always been played around uh, just with some unfortunate matchups. And you can see how powerful this deck is when it hits those right matchups. Yeah, it absolutely is. There goes the unit energy onto the active for Christian, a choice band going onto the Lycanroc GX and the Tapulilla GX as well, following it up with a Cynthia. Both players at three prizes, and Christian really looking for some more B-strings here, uh, although he also needs some Ultra Beasts to attach him to. Yeah, yeah, he does. I'm um, sure he will be able to find one eventually. Gives the, obviously he's not doesn't want to attach anymore to the buzzwall on the active. He does uh, actually. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, yes, he does. He finds a another buzzwall GX. Yeah, buzzwall GX, but no B string in his hand, and having to commit the energy to the active means, if that gets knocked out, he will just have no energy on board. Yeah, so this could be the turning point uh, again. No pun intended for Daniel <laughs> here. <laughs> that wasn't even intentional. I love it. I love it. Wasn't I love even it. intentional. I swear. So. Now, this, um, this Naganator will get KO'd by the Buzzwall, obviously. The, another Buzzwall goes down for Christian as well. Just wanted to have that in reserve just in case. But it's going to be tricky for Christian to seal this out because, like you said, there will be no energy left on his board after this. The, we know that Daniel's going to be able to fetch the KO here. He's got enough energy for it already. And, oh, no. The fourth B-string coming off the top. The turn after, you cannot use it. Oh, that, that is a shame. And remember, with... No access to Naganadal here, unless he got it from the prizes, but I don't believe so. Uh, then if he chooses to mind-blown this turn, he will be left with essentially just one energy in play. Well, no, well, no he'll be left with, with the Beast Energy. Yeah. He'll be left with... Oh, no, the Beast Energy doesn't actually matter because it will still be... It, as an extra 30, the math doesn't work out. Buzzwell obviously having one, obviously having 190. But, uh, so yeah, actually that does mean he'll be left with one energy, right? Wow. And there's the Naganadal from the prizes, having one prize card left to Christian's two. We'll have to see if Christian will be able to stay stave off the, the the next turn here from Daniel. Yeah, I mean, if he can buy himself two turns, then... Well, this is a good way to buy yourself a couple turns. Yeah. Marshadow Let Loose, usually a card that we see in the Blissephalon deck. Christian opting, this card's too good not to play. Actually, thinking about it again, I'm not sure if Daniel will be able to seal out this game unless he finds a Guzma, because... 
if he attaches one to the active and then does one charging up, that still won't be enough to KO that Lycan Rock GX in the active, which means that if Christian can just find an energy next turn, he can just attach a Dangerous Rogue for the win. That is true. It's got to be something he's uh, bearing in mind at this point. Actually got an energy switch and an Ultra Ball and a Cynthia off the cards from Let Loose and an Ultra Space as well. We could see him cobble together a little bit here, but as of right now, with the one Lele in play already, no access to a Guzma this turn. No, unfortunately not. He's going to have to try and figure this out, see what he can, what kind of comeback he can pull off. He's only one prize away from winning. He's so close, and yet just at this point so far. This game could really come down to a confusion flip. That would be pretty ridiculous <laughs> if it did. There's the Naganadal evolving from the Poipool. One charging up and now available to Daniel. Yeah, really opting to value the Heat Factory Prism Star Stadium over his Ultra Space. Uh, Heat Factory is essentially a one-sided stadium in this matchup, while Ultra Space could find Buzz Swolls for Christian. Yeah, exactly. And uh, equally, it looks like he's going to go for the charging up. Probably just going to play the energy switch straight away so he, he can make sure he does have access to Mind Blown if he, if he wants to. Or maybe he's thinking of holding it, actually, and just playing for the Cynthia. Yeah, if he even just holds the Cynthia, maybe... Now, now, you want to hold the Cynthia, you need to see more energy at this point. So, the Cynthia's got to be played, but it's just whether the energy switch gets played first. And he does go for the energy switch indeed, and then just plays the Cynthia straight away. No? Yeah, if he doesn't play the Cynthia, he maybe could kind of bluff his opponent, saying, I don't really have anything in my hand. Uh, I'll do 80 damage. Oh, that's, that's interesting. I didn't... Didn't, uh, didn't consider that, really, but it but doesn't matter. there's the energy, yeah. and Dangerous Rogue GX will take the knockout here, and game one goes to Christian. Yeah, well done, Christian. Uh, it's really quite a back-and-forth series. Uh, at some point, we fought, and yeah, both players could really just squeeze that out, but uh, Christian able to buy that one turn he needed to just attach manually uh, to a second time to the Lycanroc GX and Dangerous Rogue with the win. Yeah, and that is the power of Lycanroc, and thanks to that choice fan that he got off the prizes as well just being able to take that one hit knockout. Dangerous Rogue is and probably has been one of the best GX attacks we've seen. Yeah, it's uh, time and time again we've just seen how what, what a game ender it can be. Just uh, the ability to do 50 damage for each bench Pokemon that your opponent has that can really cap out at 250. And most of the time it is doing 250 because there's so many decks and well, most decks operate in a way where they can't really afford to bench to such a small amount of Pokemon. Maybe like one or two do, but it means that your deck is playing in a suboptimal manner, just generally. Well, yeah, well, if you think about it, uh, all of the decks that we've seen this weekend, decks like Decidueye Ninetales, or even Gardevoir Swampert Ninetales, and the Zora Control variants, Blissephalon with its Magnum Natals, uh, they all just have a full bench pretty much the entire game. And Lycanroc just loves to see that. Yeah, because of course the more stuff on the bench, the more damage it's doing. Now, Daniel's not going to you know, take this uh, take this to heart. He just understands that that, that game didn't necessarily go his way towards the end, but he knows what he needs to do to win, and he's just going to try and execute that same strategy again, going into game two, just maybe hoping that things go a little bit, bit more his way this time. Yeah, uh, and it was really unfortunate early game for him. Couldn't really get much going and then once he got that Tapu Lele he was able to kind of capitalize on it but because of that he was at that four prize turn for two or three turns and it really just was not beneficial for yeah, him. Yeah absolutely that was 100% the issue there so now here we go both players pretty much shuffled up and ready to go for this game two here at the Latin American International Championship Senior Division Trading Card Game Final. Oh this hand doesn't look too good here for Daniel. Starting a Blacephalon, but not really having much else. And wow, oh. Diancy in the top of his prizes there. That is a big one. Of course, only being able to play it as a one of that's going to be a really big struggle for him. It's going to be 20 damage less throughout pretty much most of the game. Uh, meanwhile, Daniel's prize is looking nowhere near as bad. In fact, much better. Two fire energy in there. Yeah, uh, Blacephalon's the one deck where you actually want to prize a bunch of energy just because you can use that burst GX attack to discard it and attach it right away. And uh, yeah, Daniel's. This, this acrobat is going to be important. It is. What's he find off of it? Cynthia. Oh, yeah, Cynthia. Wow, huge sigh of relief there. That and is... discarding a fire energy as well. That I is. Deal. You couldn't ride it up better. No, you definitely couldn't. So he's just going to 
whack that Cynthia down straight away and uh, going to hopefully for him find some more basic Pokemon to enable his better setup. Yeah, really looking for those Mysterious Treasures or Ultra Balls to get the Poipools also having access to Ultra Space. So quite a few outs to get his setup here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's uh, going to, he knows what he needs to do to sort of carry on going and that's uh, Cynthia really just bailing him out there from what could have potentially been very, very ugly. It looks like there's at least one and possibly an Ultra Space in his hand or maybe it's just a Lily. Uh, yeah, no, it's yeah, just, it's just I think Lily. it's two Lily. So there is a pass Lily, yeah. from Daniel now up to back to Christian. Is how is his hand any more workable? If you see, it? Oh, he does have a Brooklet Hill straight away. Yeah, uh, Brooklet Hill is just such a great utility card in this deck. Really, just getting anything you want gets your main attackers, gets your Lolan Vulpix, and then it gets your Diancy Prism as well. And that's probably what he was eyeing down here. Yeah. But unfortunately, it is prized, so he will have to change up his strategy a little. Yeah, it's um, a little bit unfortunate for him that Diancy isn't available. Does instead opt to go for the Alolan Volpix. We didn't really get to see the, the full power of Alolan Nine Hills GX in the previous game. It kind of really didn't really do as much as we would have thought it would in this matchup. Yeah, uh, and it was due to just some uh, early game stumbling from Christian with his hand. And... It could be looking a little bit better here. We see a Cynthia in his hand as well as a Fighting Energy. So I guess it's actually the bench, interestingly enough, deciding that doing like the early 30 to double Cephalon doesn't really add much value to his current state of play. And does it just play the Cynthia, it looks like, straight after? Yeah, uh, the value would have came if the Diancy Prism was in the deck, meaning you deal at least 50 damage. Uh, because this Buzzwool is probably one of the best cards in your deck. Sledgehammer is an insane attack, especially when they get uh, taking prizes. But early game, if you don't have those big damage modifiers, then 30 damage isn't really what you want to do. Well, no, exactly. It's just uh, going to potentially end really awkwardly for you. There is now going back to Danielson. He does have the Naganalo, which he evolves from the Poipol straight away. Has another fire engine in his hand, too, so he can attach that to the active. And you do, he, even if you want to do, do a charging up and actually just KO the Buzzwall here. Yeah, well... Uh, that would mean getting rid of all of his fire energy in play. Another option would be just to use that burst GX and hopefully get a fire energy, maybe set up a second Blacephalon on the bench, depending on his draw from the Cynthia. Yeah, that would be pretty good as well. But it all depends on what he draws off of the Cynthia right now. Yeah, he is really in no threat for the next coming turn, just because when your opponent doesn't get that Diancy, you're like, okay, I can play around a little bit. Uh, the Vulpix is scary, yes. but it is two energy attachment. Yeah, and there's no, there's nothing really like energy switch in Christian's list. There's so a multi switch. There's one multi switch. Okay, so in theory, we could see uh, the sublimation GX get powered up in one turn, but it's not likely, essentially. Yeah, not likely, and he would have to retreat the active Buzzwall as well. But no, we see a mind blown removing the three energy, taking the knockout on the Buzzwall. Yep. So here we go, Vulpix in the active spot. Yep, just uh, going super aggressive on the prizes straight away. There is a Brooklet Hill as well, going to be able to get any basic water or fighting Pokemon he wants from his deck and put it onto the bench, and it looks like he's going to make it that rock rough. Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of unfortunate for the uh, way that Daniel has drawn this game, only having the one Naganadal on the bench, nothing else, but he's kind of innocuously playing around Dangerous yeah. Rogue. And of course he can access the multi-switch because he can search it off of the yellow Ninetales GX. Yeah, it's a pretty insane combo here and with if he has that unit energy in his hand will be able to if he wants, take the knockout on this Blacephalon on the active. Yeah, it's so it's so easy to forget just how much of an enabler Ninetales is. You know, here I am saying, oh yeah, it's unlikely that it will happen, but no, of course when you evolve into Ninetales, you get it exactly there and there. Yeah. And I do believe I see the unit energy in his hand too. So yeah, there it is. Attachment uh, onto the active choice band onto the buzzball and um, let loose as well. Yeah, a really just a disruptive turn here from Christian. Really trying to just pull forward and make it to where Daniel can't even make a comeback. That, that is absolutely incredible. I'm, I have no doubt we are going to see a sublimation GX next turn. And if Daniel doesn't really draw much of anything else, we, we might just see a very quick game too. Yeah, and you don't even really feel afraid about if this Ninetales does get knocked out. It will take a lot, uh, at least one B-string, maybe just two. 
And if it does get knocked out, he'll still be able to use his own B-strings and eventually just overwhelm Daniel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it looks like Daniel's, Daniel's draw from that uh, uh, let loose was not that great either. There's a B-string there, but nothing really that great to attach to apart from the Nagamado. Uh, I believe there's also a Lysophilon in his hand. Okay, so that makes it a bit better, but still not really the ideal let loose. There is the Sublimation GX, instant knockout onto the active Lysophilon, two prizes for Christian, and uh, what does Daniel draw? He's got a Blacephalon of Fire Energy, an Energy Switch, it looks like. Yeah, unfortunately, with the way his hand is right now, he's not going to be able to take the knockout on this Ninetales. Wow. Uh, because he will have to retreat the Naganadal. Yeah, this is really not ideal situation for Daniel, and Christian could really just run away, from the, run away with this game here. And yeah, we could just see possibly a Burst GX or even uh, the Burn and Confusion. But if he Burst GX, that means he will be at four prizes, meaning Sledgehammer is live and very threatening. And B-String is live as well. Yes. <laughs> it's not something that you want to be able to, to enable your opponent to do when you're already in such a bad way with your, what you're staring down in your hand. You can tell he's really, really not sure what, how to approach this. There is going to be no this. No fire energy wow. in the discard as well. So he actually needed to attach that fire to the active if he wanted to retreat. Yeah, kind of just sacrificing this Naganadal in the active. Uh, but as of right now, there is no way for Christian to take the knockout on it. No, not well, not easily at least. He, he can go for a snowy wind, but that's yeah, just a pass from Daniel, and he's got to be he's got to be feeling it right now. And Christian's hand is stacked. He has well over eight cards in his hand, and all of them are just just hits right there. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, grabbing the Buzzwall GX off of the Brooklet Hill, knowing that that's going to be one of the cards he can really use to cement his advantage. Of course, probably like the most powerful standalone attacker in terms of not relying on you know, the opponent's, uh, what the opponent's doing with their prizes to get the most out of it. You can just you know, start attaching to it a bunch, and then all of a sudden you're doing knuckle impacts for, we, for KOs. He opts to go for the Lolan Vulpix with the Ultra Ball there. Really just trying to set up more utility from the Ninetales. One of the great things about it in this deck is that you're attacking with this Ninetales in the active spot. If he does take the knockout with Blucephalon next turn, well, you can just play your other Ninetales, search your deck for two B-strings, and you're all set. Yeah, that is, this is exactly the situation that Daniel has to be worried about right now. Not only is he staring down a hand of Energy Switch Naganado, but then he also needs to be worried about if he takes a, tries to take some kind of KO, what he actually can really do to make some kind of a comeback. Is that Cynthia he drew? Yeah, he drew into the Cynthia there. Wow. And again, an amazing pickup from, pick from Daniel. Bailed out from this potentially disastrous situation as uh, Daniel was sort of undoing uh, his misstep from the previous turn, playing the energy switch to the Naganadal so he can retreat it and then playing the Cynthia. Yeah, of course. These Cynthias have not been the best for him throughout this game. Really having to just rely on these two Pokemon in play. Uh, he will need a lot here. He will need a lot, but there is a potential for Daniel to play around the Sledgehammer turn. He's taken one prize currently. If he's able to find a couple of B-strings and uh, retreat the Naganadal and KO the Ninetales, then Christian would not have a Sledgehammer turn where he does 120 damage. Oh, and there is one B-string there and a Poipol as well. We could he also see. has energy. Yeah, he does. There is the B-string. We could see something pretty incredible here. Two fire energy going out onto the field, probably going to attach them to the Poipole, I imagine, or they're actually just going straight onto the Blacephalon. I mean, he's going to have to get rid of all of them regardless to, well, four of them to take a KO yeah. on the Ninetales, so it almost doesn't matter as much where they go. Definitely a good comeback turn here for Daniel, really needing to pull through and finish this game off on a strong note. Looking at his hand, he does have the Guzma for possibly later on, but no other supporter. No, then there is a charging up, just getting back the energy that was just discarded to retreat. He does have the manual attachment he could do as well, and then yeah, put him onto six energy on the front of the field, which would mean that he could then you know, make sure he can do another follow up mind blow next turn. Actually, also just put it onto the Poi Pole, and then lost zoning. Yeah, one, two, three, and four to take the knockout. Yeah. Uh, actually leaving the two on the Bislephalon, really just saying, yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to take a knockout this turn, uh, barring any B-strings. 
But that's, but of course, that is exactly what Christian yeah. will be digging for. And of course, something you have to keep remembering that Volpix is there, ready to go. And if a Nine Tails can be found, those B strings are guaranteed. This is the time and time again the strength of these archetypes that feature a lot of Nine Tails. You, instead of thinking, you know, oh, I need to draw into you know, one or two B strings to get this to get this happening. It's like I just need to draw Nine Tails, and he has it in his hand already. Has the Nine Tails already has one B string in his hand as well? Uh, this is going to be an insane turn from Christian here. Hey, how do you how do you deal with this if you're in Daniel's spot right now? Uh, I, I honestly don't know if you can. You're, you might face down three B strings being played this turn. There's even a switch for good measure, so there's, you know, there's no worry about you know, Christian not being able to attack with the buzz wall and just take the knockout here. This is absolutely phenomenal stuff from Christian right now. Yeah, opts for the ultra ball instead of the third B string. Yeah, I think I think two is enough. <laughs> Yeah, well, you only really have two Ultra Beasts in play, and so uh, it's kind of wasting a B-string here. Yeah, and interestingly enough, actually, he just opts to attach to the active and then play another B-string. Uh, this time, I imagine, it will be going onto the bench Buzzwall GX, but I believe maybe... Can he guarantee... Oh, with the Beast Energy and the Choice Band, he, I think he can guarantee the KO with Swing Around. Uh, so with Swing Around, it will be doing 140, meaning it is 10 short of taking the knockout on the Blacephalon, but there's the Professor Kakui. Off the Wonder Tag from Tapu Lele, meaning Swing Around will be able to take the knockout here. Not wanting to risk the coin flip, of course. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it, you never want to risk the coin flip. No. It's so heartbreaking when you get that double tails, and then all of a sudden you're just in a losing position. Yeah, exactly. So there it is, Christian. Go, go for the Swing Around there. No need to flip the coins. That will be enough for the KO. And now it's back onto Daniel to, again, just try and mount some kind of comeback here. He's, B, B Swing is no longer active for him. He's got no energy onto the field. I think this might seal it for Christian, you know. Yeah, uh, one of the ways this deck actually combats Buzzwool as an archetype is with Naganadal actually attacking, but with having all the energy removed off of them and then just the two in the discard, barring another energy switch here, he won't be able to get the attack off. No, and he's already committed his manual attachment for the turn to the Blacephalon anyway, so that won't be a, really a possibility for him. He sees the Heat Factory Prism Star probably a little bit later than he would have liked, would have been able to counter that Brooklet Hill and stop Christian from being able to, you know, get the Vulpix and therefore evolve into the Ninetales and set up the way he has done. Yeah, and it looks like we will see charging up here to a possible retreat and maybe the Burn and Poison or even the GX. It's just, it's just bad news no matter, no matter what you try to accomplish. Yeah, well, you're staring down that Buzzwool with two fighting energy, just one more energy, and it could really take a knockout on anything on the board with something like a Kakui or a Choice Band. Yeah, I mean, all I'm fairly sure all Christian needs at this point is a, a Guzma plus some kind of an energy and some kind of damage boost onto the Buzzwool GX to just yeah, bring up the Blacephalon GX and win the game. It doesn't look like he has access to it just yet, though. Yeah, well, he has that Lycanroc GX. Bloodthirsty Eyes could bring up that Blacephalon. Yes, okay. it does. He's going for the win right here. He's uh, one energy onto the Buzzwall. He uh, he played the Presser Kakui last turn, of course, so he, he, that's not something that he has access to right now. He plays the Ultra Ball, discarding some stuff, and they actually just, just to get rid of stuff, and he actually just goes for the Symphia afterwards. Yeah, super heads-up play here from Christian, showing his veteran presence here just discarding a bunch of cards from his hand so he has more opportunity to draw into Choice Band. Yeah, so I wonder, he could actually win with Swing Around if he gets lucky. If he gets a double heads, actually, then he wouldn't even need to attack with the Buzzball necessarily. Unless yeah, and he might have to go for it here. No Choice Band off that Cynthia. Granted, he is still in a very strong position, and we might even just see a Knuckle Impact here for 160 and kind of just be like, I'm going to win next turn. Yeah, so... There it is, Knuckle Impact 160, that Blacephalon only Or even one. a Jet Punch. It's just, okay. uh, yeah, knuckle, he's, knuckle Impact. Yeah, because he, he, he can do it either way around. He can do the Jet Punch first, or he can do the Knuckle Impact first, and just deciding it makes more sense to, whilst everything is in the active, do the Knuckle Impact now, and then maybe, if he need be, finish off the Blacephalon with a Jet Punch. All right, and this is not looking good for Daniel here. He could be on his last turn of the game. No real way to heal up that Blacephalon, and as long as Buzzful GX is in Christian's deck, a simple jet punch could just take the game and the championship. Sights here being played, discarding a Guzman and a Poipol, I believe, drawing a couple more cards, nothing really there that's helpful for him. B-string's not live. The, that's not... I don't think he can get enough energy on the board even to KO this 
Boswell or maybe maybe not. He's got a choice man in hand. Choice man in hand, but that does not help with the math at all here. No, he's going to be 10 short. One fire energy attachment plus one choice band will not get it for him. And I don't believe he has any fire engine in a discard pile. Oh, no, he does. Okay, so so you can attach the active, then play the choice band and get the KO on the Buzzwall. But again, that still doesn't help him because then the Buzzwall on the bench comes in and KOs him anyway. Yeah, he's just one turn short here. And with Christian Sand, he has that Guzma. He has everything he needs on the field as well. Uh, it's really just going through the motions. There, there's the discard. Another charging up. Does oh, do we see an energy switch in his hand? No. no. He and just there is the pass. He did knuckle impact, but we know there is the Guzma, and that is it. Christian Marino is your 2018-2019 international champion here in Latin America. For the trading card game in the senior division. Huge congratulations to Christian there, really piloting his deck to perfection. And again, congratulations to Daniel. A very well fought battle, just not quite able to beat, beat this onslaught of you know, beast rings and nine tails and everything else. Yeah, uh, really just putting on a clinic of how powerful a lull in nine tails GX is, especially in a matchup against Ultra Beast Pokemon. Uh, just pretty insane to see how these new cards have been affecting everything. Yeah, it's an absolutely phenomenal deck. And you can see the smile on Christian's face there. He is going to be super happy with his accomplishment there. Again, huge congratulations to him.